Hello, welcome to Frame of Mind, a thought-provoking show intended to support and educate families and those with mental illness. Um, we're here with Dr. Dennis McCrory, uh, and this is part four of our discussion uh, about the incredible life that this man has led, the McCrory story. Now, <laughs> <laughs> right, Dennis? Uh, I'll tell you the story of Dennis McCrory, and now my story has begun. I'll tell you another about his brother, and now my story is done. So we're all done. We, we can we go, go home now. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> Well, Dennis, it's been a thrill seeing you back. It's been a few years since we did the first three shows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, remarkable, remarkable story from the streets of Manhattan all the way back here to Boston and a lot of That's incredible lot. events in between uh, yeah. and real leadership in the mental health community over these years. Uh, I know yeah. a true mentor for myself and many others in the rehabilitation field. And it's honored to have you back here, uh, particularly on your, eight, on your birthday, if we can say the age. It's my pleasure. Yes, it, uh, it, it does happen to me on my birthday. And I'm all dressed up, like I'm with a tie. You're looking good. You know, and, uh, and I will tell my birthday, it's hard to believe that I'm really 83. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dennis. Happy birthday to you. 73? Yeah, close. 83, 83, 83 years 83 young. 83 years old, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just remarkable. And there's a reason you're all dressed up today. Where, where were we today? We, 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 yeah. We're just coming from the Point After Club. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, w I would like your viewers to to know this, that uh, that we were we all got together over at the clubhouse, and uh, uh, and there was a ceremony for some young adults uh, who were in a program and graduating, mm -hmm. uh, and this was preparing them to go back to work or to go to work, mm -hmm. and these were young people with with different sort of psychiatric diagnoses. And uh, on this program, uh, they, they got a chance to sort of put themselves together mm -hmm. and learn something about how to move ahead into their adult life and work. And a number of them were going to turn out to be peer mentors. And that I don't know if your viewers have heard of peer mentors or programs like this, because very often, and Joe Mikula, uh, who is now the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, commissioner, Departmental Health was a child person mm. for many years, child right. services, mm -hmm. and so she takes a different approach to these things, and, and she talks about trajectory, and that an awful lot of mental illnesses start in a person's adolescence or early adulthood, and how they are treated, supported, responded to at the beginning of that experience has a profound effect on the rest of their lives. She uses the word trajectory, mm -hmm. right? I was in college, can I go back to college, right? I was gonna get married, can I get married, right? I was a mother, can I? And people very often lose their self-confidence. They don't know quite what to do. And, uh, and in, the old, in the old days, that people were left pretty much to themselves. Mm -hmm. And little by little by little by little, we're coming up to the present, we're saying, well, you need some special help and not just the psychiatric diagnosis and treatment, you need a life and opportunities to live and what can we do to help. And this program that we're at this morning, which was very helpful, mm -hmm. and I had a chance after you to, uh, to welcome the people who were there and it was, a, it was a jam, wasn't it? There must have been 90, 100 people in the room, yep. 13 graduates. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was brilliant. And I think, you know, when we were coming over here, I think this is kind of what we were talking about. What do we want to talk about? And we want to talk about hope yeah. and about what, what are some of the things that are happening that can change the trajectory or the system or particularly the lives of, of individuals who mm -hmm. have mental health conditions. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, um, you know, we just did a, <coughs> excuse me, a mental health awareness event at, at the Heritage State Park. And last year, the theme was B4 Stage 4. Uh -huh. Trying to get early interventions, getting people, you know, yeah. it support <clears throat> at an early age when 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 there's an early part of the di of the the illness diagnosed, uh -huh. um, and I think this particular program, the gift program that we went through today, um, was far more than any treatment or medication. It's about like you talk about. It's about hope. It's about respect. It's about finding who you are uh -huh. and your, your core gift talents. Yeah. Uh, the gift stands for uh, gathering, inspiring future talent. And what I liked about it is not only finding out yourself, it's not this whole self-reflective thing, it's seeking out from your friends, your yes. family, you know, what yeah. they think your gifts are, you right. know, and, and I think that, yeah. that 
really was profound for some of these young adults. And mm -hmm. it was, I think yeah, it was beautiful to hear them explain their gift, their, their core gift talents. Mm -hmm. We want to thank, in fact, before we go any further, I want to thank uh, Ginny Alexander and the crew here at uh, the Lawrence Cable Access Television here for walking us back, but they also yeah. videotaped the, the gift. And so we hope we can have that on, on, yeah. on local cable because it was very, very inspiring. There were a couple of Point After Club members that were involved in the graduations, which we're very proud of. Uh, one of them actually told her recovery story, which was very beautiful. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, there, there is a lot of hope um, mm -hmm. in the sense of really trying to connect people with psychiatric uh, diagnosis with what we all want because you know, we're all people, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, really looking at work as being the central ingredient and step forth oh, oh is, is huge. Oh, boy. You like the idea about work, Dennis? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I think in our first program, you heard my work history going back mm -hmm. to the delivery boy, being the usher, driving finally a Coca-Cola truck, and all of that went into me so that as I became a doctor and a psychiatrist, I knew something about life. Mm -hmm. And you don't learn it all in school, you don't learn it all from your family or friends, right? Work is a very important thing. It's a leveler, right? It absolutely is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and to hear the stories today, this morning, uh, was just uh, inspiring. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and what it brought to mind is, is uh, some, in the 80s, I started a program at the South Shore, employment program for kids who had serious mental illness. And it's gratifying to see how that is, has been spreading, mm -hmm. right? But, but spreading like a patchwork, that's what it's talked about. It's here and there right. it pops mm -hmm. up. And they've graduated now something like 180. Uh, uh, from the gift program, from yes. From the yeah. gift program, and of those 75% of the people are working. And Remarkable that, th statistic. Those, those are wonderful figures, mm -hmm. yeah. When you look at approximately 17% of the population, with the diagnosis of mental, major mental illness are working competitively this time, and you have 17 and then 75 percent, so yeah. it's pretty profound. Yeah, and of course, that's gonna go forward, one hopes mm -hmm. that, that, that that will continue. But to continue, recovery is not just, as we said earlier, is not a straight line thing, it, it, it's cyclical. And people will have their challenges, and people mm -hmm. will have their regressions, and people may need to be hospitalized again, or become suicidal again, and it doesn't mean to say that it was all a mistake, because life can be very challenging, very challenging. And to share this with you, another, on a personal note, uh, one of my family members uh, has a serious mental illness, and uh, it happened to her not too long after she became a mother. And it's just been very interesting to, as a parent now and a family member, to sort of have someone in the family who is working on her recovery. Mm -hmm. You know, and she's had her, she's been, turned out to be a very good mother. And, uh, uh, and just in the last, uh, uh, in the last uh, eight months, uh, she's returned to work. Her daughter is old enough and she's mm -hmm. far enough along in her recovery. And, uh, uh, and it's very gratifying. And just a few weeks ago, we call, talk on the phone frequently, and uh, she said she had a hard day at work. And I smiled <laughs> and said, welcome to yeah. the club. Amen. She yeah. wasn't a failure. She didn't have to quit the job. She didn't, wasn't ready to give up. She just had a hard day. And there'll be other hard days, you know, but meanwhile, she's learning. You know, one and of the things over the years, you always said that, um, uh, that one of the things that people really need more than anything is someone that believed in them. Yeah. And that support. And I know that, you know, sitting across from me is someone that believed in his daughter. And, and I, mm. I think that you should be very proud of where you're at. I know it was difficult. And to really give credit to, to, to NAMI and other families, mm -hmm. it is hard. And just because I know these things professionally. So NAMI is the National Alliance of Mental Health. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. it happens in your personal life, it's a very different thing. But I would have to go back to, this, to what I knew and say, there's hope here. Mm -hmm. And this is ambiguous. True. Sure. Ambiguous. And uh, uh, we talked about early warning signs. You know, what are your early warning signs? So she says, I don't want to talk to you about that, Daddy. I'll talk to my case manager about that. So if you see anything that you think is an early warning sign, you call her. Don't talk to me about it. And that preserved the relationship. Mm -hmm. I was not her doctor. Nice. I was her daddy, mm -hmm. her father. Yeah. You made a nice comment when we were talking over at the club earlier about your young adult program. And I, I wish you, if you could share that about how the, you kind of set the stage in the sense of how folks may have relationship issues with their family and their friends, 
But when they go to work, it's a whole different relationship. Do you, do you recall what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. Want to share that? Yeah. 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 Because we found that in our employment program, right? And uh, and the, the, the way I, I like to say it, uh, some of these kids were no good at school, no good at family, <laughs> no good at treatment, right? And sometimes no good with friends, right? But they could be very good at work with support, of mm. course. And the, the, the corollary of that is that the boss was not a parent or a social worker, right? It was a boss. And if you wanted to get paid, which is a big incentive, you had to, you had to do your work, right? Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, the boss might even smile at you. And I got a kick out of that, because that's true. Yeah. Some bosses don't smile very often, you know, or, or give you positive feedback. It's just the paycheck. I'll have to remember that. Is your positive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I like the way you, you express that. It's uh, yeah. it's so important, and you know, we, when we when we talk about the, the life changing things at the clubhouse, we, we, we really see work as as a life changing thing. Moving yeah. back to work, and the and the the, yeah. the manner in which you know a member who is out there competitively employed comes back with their head high and, and with pride. And it's more than the money. It's more than the money. Yeah. And also safe, affordable housing. Getting an apartment that's safe and nice, that, that's affordable, um, is another incredible life-changing thing and, and both yeah. both bring their own challenges to the table um, yeah. but both are you know where we need to really be looking as we move forward in, in mental health and, and looking to support individuals um, that, that they want and need just what we do because they're just like us they're people uh, here living in this yeah. world we live yeah. yeah what that brings to mind if I if I may may I of course Bob? it's your uh, show uh, there, there was just in our Sunday Globe Mm -hmm. There was an article about mental health and the, the resources that are there, and are they sufficient to take care of people? And the and the approach they took was to the the entry point was talking about violence and danger and all the rest of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And and I'm I'm waiting for the day when programs like this can get in the newspapers because they they they're, they're not that kind of news. Sure. Which, which really makes things harder, I think, for everybody. Now, of course, if it gets the resources, that's something else again. But meanwhile, you, you know, just fear and concern and sadness, but also hope. And these programs are demonstrating that mm -hmm. there's hope, right. right? And that's been clear for many, many years. Clubhouses have demonstrated Absolutely. from the 50s, mm -hmm. from the 40s, actually. And little by little, they spread around the world. But, but that's not enough. No. You know, people have to know that people. John and John and Jane Jones, huh? Mm -hmm. Need to know that. Johnny too. Jones, my buddy. Yeah, yeah he, he does need to know that. Yeah. Joe Sixpack needs to know that. You know, yeah. I, in, in all the families yeah. out there in our society. But I guess yeah. more importantly, the legislators and the folks who are holding the, the, the purse strings yeah. need to know this and start acting by yeah. providing more resources. So yeah. there can be early prevention. There can yeah. be the types yeah. of programs that can be life changing. Yeah. Um, instead of some of the negative stories that we hear. Yeah. Because yeah. I believe, you know, if you if you listen to all those stories, there are all these cues in advance where intervention was possible yeah. but didn't happen, and then for, we have for these, one reason eventually or another. these tragic outcomes. Yeah. For one reason or another, I mean, yeah. we're not pointing fingers, but basically, yeah. saying, I'm saying that there are and there are programs, there are yeah. there are designs yeah. of programs yeah. that can be life changing yeah. for people yeah. with the proper supports yeah. Yeah, and, and big, resources. One of the big breakthroughs, it, it, it I think it was before our last visit, but I don't think that we talked about it then, is, uh, is that the, there's been a peer movement now going back 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. It's nothing new. And for the last 10 years or so, there is something called peer specialists. And these are people in recovery with serious mental illness uh, who can get some training. And there are then jobs open for them in the system in a variety of places. Could be on a crisis team, could be on an inpatient unit, could be in a residence, uh, where, where they offer a different point of view, uh, both for the patients, but also for the staff. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting that as there are programs that, that move in this direction, people begin to change their way of looking at things and become more human. Not so scientific and clinical, mm -hmm. but more, huh? M m more informal, but safe, yeah. right? Because then you need boundaries, you know? 
Uh, and sometimes there are dangerous situations where it's a sh handshake isn't going to do it, right. right? You need something more than that. But even then, in, in, in hospitals where, where, where there is, you can imagine that if people have trouble on the street, they can also have troubles in the hospital. And at some earlier time, they did, did a study of violence. And what they found is that the people most liable to be victims of the violence were the nurses on the first admission in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Right, because nobody knew this person. Right, right, and they just came. That's, that's changing as time goes by. Uh, 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 but uh, 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 but there are other ways of dealing with uh, someone who is excited, potentially dangerous, potentially dangerous. Mm -hmm. But the important is the energy and the excitement. Right, and how do they channel it? Right, and sure. there are now uh, crisis intervention trainings. That again, NAMI is, is um, honchoing in this state uh, to, to train police officers, you know, in terms of there are different ways of intervening in a mm -hmm. mental health crisis. Right. You know, and it doesn't have to lead to violence. It doesn't have right. to. Yeah, we, yeah. we would just have, we had a discussion, I, I was talking with you and, and Ann about uh, the jail diversion program, uh -huh. which was a brilliant program. We had yeah. a grant here in the city yeah. that had a clinician riding on the police car from 3 to 11. Um, we utilized it quite often. Just whether it was a safe person check or just a, a, a identifying that someone was out there, maybe out on the streets, was not doing well, and we weren't able. There had been maybe the mobile outreach team and out looking for them, but this was um, incredibly successful in being able to have a, a, an intervention with the person where instead of the first, the person is not getting arrested, the person is getting help, right. and I think that that happens way too often. <clears throat> but just want to go back a step to to I I think that the the peer movement has really taken a incredible you know positive growth over the years from yeah. being very angry to being at the table and really yeah. you know helping to change the system and being tremendously um, yeah. I think respected at this point you know by a lot of us out in the, out in the field as being the folks who, who we really look to for advice yeah. um, and I think that um, this is certainly the way of the future and as, as we looked at that training today that yeah. A big part of that train. A lot of those young adults are going to be were trained as part of this train to be peer mentors. Peer mentors moving forward. You know, I know that you know at the club. Um, actually, we just hired a young adult. But when, when we have young young people come in, it's a little more difficult for them to relate to me. You know, young fella as I am. But uh, but um, it's it's important that we bring that mix. But not only having someone that's young, but someone who's been through it. I and mean, you know, yeah. look at some of the other movements yeah. with AA and, and NA and those types yeah. of uh, programs. Yeah. How, you know, I've been there and done that type of, uh, or experienced these types, the same things that you're going through, yeah. is a way of really breaking the ice for some folks, yeah. and, and, and very successfully. So, yeah. so we're very glad that that is, is that they're they're at the table now and not in, in this token position that they yeah. were many years ago at, at conferences yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But their voice is being heard yeah. by many. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting. I was uh, at some public hearings a while ago, and. Uh, uh, about, about mental health services, resources. Uh, I, c I can go into that some more if you want me to, but I just assume not. And as I sat there, uh, I, could, I could see all that we could do now that couldn't be done 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. If you remember, I know that the viewers all well, have Let's seen get back the to the McCrory one. story. Here. Tell yeah. us a little bit about 50 yeah. years ago and bring us to what you're saying yeah, today. Well, I'll just, just to start at the beginning that, that my career in mental health began as a college graduate who didn't know what he wanted to do and who got himself a summer job at a state hospital in New York State with 8,000 patients, four doctors, uh, one, one nurse for every 500 patients, and there was really no treatment. Mm -hmm. No treatment. Lodging, huh? People were kept safe, pretty much, huh? Right. But, uh, but that was it. And, uh, 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 and when I left, so I spent, and I was written up for talking to a patient. My job was not to talk to, I was an attendant, right? right? My job was to keep order, right? And keep, keep things clean. And, uh, uh, and just that September, out came the first medicine, Thorazine. And within two years, the, the milieu was changed so much, half of those people were discharged. And the other half uh, were much more active and they had nurses and OTs preparing them to live in the community, but there weren't the community services. Right. No one was prepared for that, you know? And the money that was supposedly going to close down a hospital ward, that gives you money, you'll put that back in the system 
for outpatient services, it went to the general fund. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and one of the uh, annual conferences, the, the Mental Health Association of Massachusetts, was out of the back wards and into the back alleys. And there was truth in that. Well, unfortunately, there's still a lot of truth to that today. And today, and, and now, for instance, I'm on an employment subcommittee for the Mental Health Association and on a housing committee. And it's remarkable how much housing there is, already subsidized housing, right? right? Uh, uh, but how much more is needed, yeah. you know? Well, we live we're here in Lawrence, you know, for instance, you know, uh, a folk, a, a one-bedroom apartment, we're lucky if we can find a one-bedroom apartment for $900. Mm. And if someone is living on SSI, Supplemental Security Income with a Disability and Not Working, they're getting approximately $790 and some food stamps. So you do the math. Mm. How do you make it without some type of supports? Yeah. It makes it, you know, and, and as you get closer to the city, the rents even go up even higher. Yeah. Um, I mean, there was a spike in our rents back in the late 90s that never went down. Yeah. And it still creates such an incredible yeah. burden. And in looking for apartments in Lawrence right now, I was on the, um, the Housing Works website. They had a big long list of all the units in Lawrence. They're almost all full, too. There's, there's very rare to find in the apartment complexes a one bedroom. So, it, so the, um, <coughs> there are many challenges when it comes, particularly around housing. I mean, uh, employment is one thing, but in, in, which, is, which is somewhat of an answer, because if it, someone can get a job, it increases their income and they can afford to live more. Mm. But the need for some type of, you know, you, there's a lot out there, mm -hmm. but we find that every day at the club, the need that, that we, we, we still need to find yeah. some more solutions whether it's more subsidy yeah. to resources or yeah. more, more yeah. you know, project-based housing or whatever it is. Yeah. You know, as we're talking, it, it occurs to me that there are all sorts of things going on and we're not gonna have any time to really get into it enough today. And this well, is an ongoing... I, I thought we were gonna solve all the world's problems here today. Well, we, 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 know, we, we, we solved about half of them. Got big but, shows, uh, yeah. Just, another <laughs> Just half. kidding. Go ahead. And, uh, 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 and I'm wondering if this is a series, whether whether you viewers ever call in or write in and say, would you cover this? Would you cover that? Because we'd l like to learn more about that. Because mm -hmm. what just came to mind has came to mind about benefits, and a lot of people are really afraid to go to work because they're afraid of losing their benefits. Right? That if you're disabled, that that comes to think of your security. Right. Uh, on the other hand, there are all sorts of accommodations that have been made by the federal government mm -hmm. that you can work up to a certain point and then, and then you start to balance it out. But meanwhile, you, you don't lose your medical insurance just because you, and you, you don't lose, lose your help with rental right away, you know, but people don't have the information. And so that's, that's a fear, particularly with families, families with young family members who are disabled. Mm -hmm. Because, right. oh my God, we need to have Medicaid for them, right, or mass health, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I get, I get passionate about this stuff because I'm near the end of my career. So one of, when you mention that, when we sit in a room idealistically at the club and we talk about frame of mind as something that we want to you know, pursue in the future, yeah. uh, you know, as, as I mentioned in the tag at the beginning, we want to educate and support yeah. families and people living with mental illness. Yeah. And I guess the only way we can do that is by providing information in many yeah. cases yeah. around benefits. We know, you know we work with benefit specialists from Work Without Limits. There are other folks that you know, yeah. Mass Rehab has. Yeah. Um, and, and there, are, there, are, there, are, there are solutions to some of these problems, even with the housing. There are specialized subsidies that are out there. Yeah. So I think you know, down the road, you know, one of the things we clearly want to do is, is have met people with lived experience talking about their recovery stories. Oh boy. Which can give so many answers to folks yeah. living so you're not alone. You know, they, yeah. they can feel yeah. that, that, that feeling of some, I've been there, but then this person may have some, some you know, uh, ins inspirational words that may inspire yeah. them to move forward in their lives yeah. too. But yes, that's our intent here is to move this forward, um, partnering with, 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 with Lawrence Cable Television uh, with, with future shows um, directed on recovery-oriented programming, but, uh, but a program that, that, that's real, that can support and educate folks yeah. to, to seek solutions to some of these, this myriad of problems. Yeah. This, you know, it, it's tough enough dealing with the system when you have to deal with, with mass health and yeah. DTA or Social Security, yeah. or the Department of Mental Health, you know, yeah. or your treater, you know, there, there's so many yeah. systems out there, and I think yeah. you know, 
there are also many people who have been able to work those systems to their success in their recovery. Amen. So yeah, I think that's Amen. that's a yeah good place to go. Yeah. How about yourself, Dennis? Eighty-three years old. Yeah. How you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> a loaded question. Well, no, I mean, I, I, I want to be uh, truthful to you. Uh, uh, the the other day. Uh, I went for a walk and I said I'm walking like an old man and I have a walking stick no well it's like a shillelagh except it's it's a just it's a, a stick mm -hmm. uh, but it's a, it's, a, it's almost a cane yeah. and I found myself sanding it down so that I could varnish it and I'm getting ready for that right if I survive you know who knows whether I'll be around for my next birthday, who knows. But meanwhile, I'm trying to take care of myself, and I've been thinking about retirement for the last two years, and it's still very, working. You're it's still working. very hard yeah. to do because it's so interesting and important. I care about it. And like today, I was over at your, your clubhouse where everybody is somebody, mm -hmm. and I felt like somebody. You are somebody. Right, I was treated nicely the way, almost as nice as you treated your members. No, I thought you had retired, and then the last time I was driving you home from an event, you were you had me to be quiet because you had a, you had to call a patient. So yeah. you, you are still working yeah, in I practice. Still yeah, I have my practice. It's, yeah. very, it's shrunk considerably, mm -hmm. I've slowed down. Yeah. But, but, but it, there's just, just some good stuff going on, and you don't want to, want to get away. And I want to come back to the point of, uh, there was this fellow, uh, Tim O'Leary, Loved him. Yep. Uh, who, who he was he was at the mental health uh, association, mm -hmm. and I think he'd been a, a politician. He'd been in the in, yep. the, uh, Tim, in yeah. the in the house before, and he was talking about he he used to train on advocacy, and he says she says if you want to advocate, uh, you don't approach someone that we need something we need something it's so terrible, uh, you have to find a way of couching it more positively and more hopefully. That that, 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 that that this could make an improvement over the way it is now, or that this is going on over there, can we make it more general? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I want, because I'm hoping, because I find myself spending much more time at the State House uh, than, than, than I did earlier in my career. So, so it's interesting that you are on committees, state committees for both employment and housing, as I mentioned, two yeah. of the life-changing things. Yeah. I know we're coming to the end of the show here. Um, I, I, I think that as we talk, and you're spending a lot of time at the State House, maybe, you know, Maybe the next time we talk, we can talk about advocacy strictly and really bring in some of the uh, challenges, but also solutions that we can maybe ponder around what we can do to advocate with our state legislators and yeah. with the federal government yeah. around making resources more available or more plentiful so that we can uh, connect the dots for those many people who are falling through the cracks nowadays uh -huh. and not knowing where to go. Yeah. What hey, think? was that another time? We, you had yeah, but, you know, I mean, I know you love coming down to Lawrence. I, I really do, and this is we a can't real, call it a day. Yeah, on this. You're, you're, you're such a good host. <laughs> you ask good questions, and they're so nice here at the at the and station. They, they are. They, they really are. are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dennis. And <laughs> we'll do this once again, my friend. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Thank and you. Thank you for tuning in. Mm -hmm. uh,